What's up guys, I wanted to make a video about this very famous scene from the anime where Toma finally defeats Oriolus Izzard after his right arm is severed and features the very first dragon appearance in the franchise. It just shows you the power that Toma had in his fapping arm. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I'm going to tell you exactly what was going on in this scene from start to finish as I know it's quite tempting to be blinded by the absolute hype of watching Toma scare the living shit out of Izzard. Like why did Toma's character turn so dark suddenly? How the hell was he still alive from losing all that blood? Was that dragon even real? And did Izzard get vored to death? I'll be answering all those questions now. But first, you may notice I am quite close to 5,000 subscribers. And a while ago, I promised that I would do an Alistair character analysis if I get to that number. So I'll be discussing who I think is the best character in the entire Toaru franchise. And I will tell you why in that video. So I need you to help me get there. So smash that subscribe button harder than Thomas smacks lolly nuns. During Toma's fight against Izzard, Izzard believes that cutting off Toma's arm will give him the advantage he needs to defeat Toma, as what can this level 0 Esper possibly do without a Magin Breaker? What could possibly go wrong if it gets cut off? <laughs> Ignorance sure is bliss. So Izzard uses his Ars Magna, the magic that turns the user's thoughts into reality to sever Toma's arm, and Izzard starts laughing, thinking he is so smart. Gigabrain Izzard quickly goes nutty, because Toma felt bad that Izzard was laughing alone, so he joined in, since Toma is such a nice guy. That bro moment when your laugh is more evil than the villain's laugh. Toma's arm, or what remained of it, is heavily bleeding, and yet he doesn't seem to be in any pain. He walks over slowly towards Izzard, but Izzard panics and his Ars Magna mysteriously doesn't seem to affect Toma. Toma's arm then transforms into a dragon which attacks Izzard and yet he does survive. Well, that's what we see occur in the anime. You might be wondering, how the hell does any of that make sense? Am I tripping right now? I will use the information we know from the light novel combined with some theories here and there to make perfect sense of this scene, starting from the beginning. Just before Izzard severed Terma's arm, Terma had already figured out that Izzard wasn't as strong as he appeared to be. The Ars Magna is clearly a very powerful spell, but why did Izzard simply not use it to turn Index into a vampire, as that was his initial plan? which he needed Himigami for in order to use her as bait to bring a vampire to him. As Himigami's deep blood ability would attract vampires to her. Toma realised that it is not Izzard's words that become reality, but it is his thoughts. Izzard simply couldn't magic a vampire out of his ass into existence because vampires are some of the most mysterious beings in the Toaru universe. If he did decide to warp reality to create a vampire, it would be limited to his imagination of what a vampire should be, rather than the genuine article. Terma also figured out why Izzard was using needles to stab his neck before using Ars Magna, ultimately to focus his thoughts on what he wanted to create and most importantly, using self-harm as a way to relieve anxiety. Basically, Izzard is a green-haired emo. Izzard being the anxious prick he is, severed Toma's arm, thinking that it would not only destroy Toma's surprising amount of confidence that he had against someone with his level of power, but would also take away Toma's ability, Imagine Breaker. Toma was obviously shocked when his arm was severed like any normal person would be, but in a different way than what you might think. There was no pain, weird, and Toma wondered why Izzard didn't simply target his head or his heart rather than his arm. It's because Izzard 
new Imagine Breaker was the one counter to his own power, the one thing that would cause doubt in his mind. Toma therefore came up with an idea, he would put on an act to terrify the living shit out of Izard, increasing Izard's self doubt and anxiety to the point where Izard would struggle to control and manifest Ars Magna in the way that he wanted, as Ars Magna was a spell where you had to really concentrate hard to use it, otherwise it wouldn't work or it would just go out of control. If Toma simply laughed like a maniac at losing his ultimate weapon of dealing with Ars Magna, Izard would panic as a result. And that's exactly what happened. Izard's magic no longer affected Toma. Toma also purposefully walked slowly towards Izard with a shit-eating grin on his face and purposefully mocked and intimidated Izard so that he would further lose control. And the Oscar goes to Kamijo Toma. However, it is revealed in the epilogue that Style interfered with his Heat Mirage magic to throw off Izard's first two attacks. As Style figured out what Toma was trying to do and decided to assist him, while Izard was preoccupied with dealing with Toma. Style didn't interfere though with the third attack that Izard unleashed. Interestingly, Izard's third attack, the guillotine spell, supposedly hit Toma, and yet the magic was shattered just by touching Toma when it hit him. In the anime, you even hear the Imagine Breaker sound effect when this spell is repelled. But why would we hear this noise if Imagine Breaker had already been severed? Well, if we fast forward to Index Season 3, where Toma's arm is severed again by Fiamma of the Right, Fiamma attempts to kill Toma, except his magic is nullified, despite Toma no longer having his right hand to negate it. This is due to what the fandom call the invisible thing. Even though, ironically, it is pretty visible in the anime, Imagine Breaker acts as a seal for different powers within Toma's arm. Therefore, without Imagine Breaker or the arm, these sealed powers are unleashed. The invisible thing's power is mysterious, but from what we do know about it, it does have a negation effect on the same level or even stronger than that of Imagine Breaker. And its power has been stated to grow over the course of time. So while Izard's attacks may have previously missed because of his lack of composure, this guillotine attack seemingly should have worked as it's the only one of Izard's attacks that is stated to make contact with Toma, and yet it is shattered, which also happens to the supernatural attacks that hit Imagine Breaker. Therefore, in this moment, it is likely that the invisible thing protected Toma, and this was the final straw for Izard, being unable to regain any sort of composure. Next, we get the iconic dragon arm scene, which results in Izard's demise. This is what makes this scene so great, because first time viewers are led to the impression that the dragon is the culmination of Izard believing that Toma is a monster, therefore his Ars Magna transformed Toma's arm into that of a dragon, representing Izard's fear of Toma's newfound confidence and power. But after watching Railgun T, this scene becomes very different, as that same dragon appears after Toma's arm is cut off again. Like seriously, how many times does Toma's arm get cut off? Anyway, it appears with multiple other dragons, proving that Toma has an entire dragon zoo inside his right arm. Going back to Toma and Izard, I like the fact that this scene has different interpretations depending on what you're aware of, and the light novel actually makes you consider if it was real or not. We soon get a time skip where Toma is in hospital, where it is stated that Toma's severed arm was reattached to him by the medical staff, which miraculously started working normally again after just one day. Heaven Cancellor even describes Toma's body as strangely fantastic, hinting that Toma's body isn't exactly normal, and this is undoubtedly due to the presence inside his right arm. The only reason why this even works 
is because Toma's right arm can regenerate after it is severed, which is also probably the reason why Toma did not feel any pain and his bleeding soon stopped. But why didn't it regenerate instantly, like in Railgun T and in the next season 3? It's possibly due to the fact that the invisible thing's power becomes stronger the more that Imagine Breaker is used. Therefore, its healing properties weren't as fast on this occasion, but that's just a theory, otherwise we don't know. The invisible thing also seems to have some sort of conscience, or mind of its own, as when Terma communicates to it in Index Season 3. So maybe on this occasion, the invisible thing was like, nah fuck it, I'll just leave it to the hospital staff this time. Style explains the fate of Izard, that the dragon actually wiped his mind when it bit him. This specific dragon is known as the Dragon King, and was confirmed by the Railgun T producer that this dragon does indeed have the power to wipe or erase memories or the mind itself. Quite fitting for Terma, considering he himself has lost his memories. Izzard in fact did not die, as Style decided to use magic to change his appearance completely, so that Izzard was essentially an entirely new person rather than kill him. Now, I have a little crack theory about Toma going berserk. This is just a theory and it's probably bullshit, but I want to talk about it anyway. By the way, I'll be spoiling New Testament 22R in the light novel in 3, 2, 1. Okay, I get that Toma was acting when he went berserk, but just imagine that by severing his arm in this moment, a bit of KNT influenced Toma to act like this, as it was such a sudden personality shift where it suits KNT way more than it does Toma, and would also fit with when in World War 3, where Toma talks to the presence in his right arm and rejects that power, which might have also been KNT. Or he could have just been talking to a different being in his arm, such as the dragons. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative. Post your theories down in the comments below, and yeah, let me know what you'd like to see on the channel in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time, bye bye.